So I was recently trying to set up a uh, multiplayer game of Stardew Valley, uh, but our group of friends uh, were lucky enough to have uh, more than four people who want to play. Uh, I was directed to a Reddit thread where a user had basically discovered that the game doesn't check for the number of players, uh, it essentially checks the number of cabins and allows the player to spawn uh, one per cabin. So using the standard save editing tricks, you, if you throw a few more cabins into your world, turns out more players can join. And uh, I had a look online, couldn't really find any good video tutorials. Uh, I ended up having to download some software and, uh, you know, through some really weird means. And, and then the XML files themselves were a bit different to, to how they looked on the thread and I had to make some different changes. And so I thought I'd just throw together a quick explanation on how to do it. Uh, I'll probably not bother using any of the software I downloaded as well, so you should be able to follow this uh, directly. So the first thing we'll do is just locate our save. This is where it should be if you're on Windows. Um, the wiki tells you in, in fairly good detail how to find your save. Uh, so yeah, if you're on Linux or Mac, you can, you can just uh, consult the wiki. This is the save file. I'm just going to copy... Uh, this somewhere separate. Oh, actually, I've, I've already got it here. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm, this is just a copy of my of my save file. Uh, just somewhere that I can back it up in case everything goes wrong. So I'm just going to open this with Notepad. As you can see, it's a complete mess. Um, if you have something to open this that can actually read these XML files properly then then by all means use it uh, you know you'll get something a bit more organized like this where you can see all the tags and everything's nice and indented but I'll go off the assumption that you guys don't have anything like that uh, all we're really interested in is the buildings tag because we just want to add we just want to add some more cabins don't we so I'm just going to just to make it easier, I'm going to find the two, uh, the buildings tag and the closed buildings tag. Just dash next to it. I'm going to copy this to a separate Word file. You don't have to necessarily do it like this. It's just easier this way. Just pop it here. And this is our buildings tag. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find the last building. Uh, well, actually, one thing you might want to note first is if we just do a quick check for tile X, which is the position that these buildings get placed at. Uh, maybe it's X tile. Oh god, this is another recording that's gone to pot. Oh, it's because I'm at the bottom of the document. Okay, we'll just forget that happened. Um, so the values you see here, tile X and tile Y, are 35 and 14. Uh, that's the first cabin. Second cabin is 42 and 14. And the final cabin is 50 and 14. Uh, you might want to keep a note of these numbers. They should, I assume they'll be the same for you, but just in case they're not, you you might want to keep track of them somewhere. That's where the cabins are currently being placed. Uh, what you'll want to do is you'll want to place your cabins in relation to these. So, you know, you don't want to place your cabin at coordinate 500. You won't be able to access it. So what I've done is in my world, I've cleared out all the, uh, all the, all the junk, uh, below my three cabins and so i'm just going to place them at the same x coordinate and just a y coordinate of like 20 or 25 just uh, below so i'll have essentially two rows of cabins but yeah you can you can place them however you want that those are the coordinates you change though tile x and tile y anyway let's isolate one of our buildings oh one minute i'll just do the last one There we go. And I think maybe I'll throw this in a separate document as well. 
Yeah, let's let's do that. Just to get all the junk out of the way. I can never find my cursor. Okay, and so this is our building. Now, uh, one thing I want to do quickly is I just want to get rid of the... So there's a thing in here called... Uh, I think it's farmhand. Oh, one minute. I, that might just be because I'm in the wrong place. Yep, farmhand. We don't want farmhand. So... Just gonna space everything out and just destroy all of this. Okay, uh, be careful with this. Make sure you don't delete any characters by accident. So there we go. I've now got my building file without that farmhand nonsense. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a big waste of space, basically. I don't know if you can keep it in. You, you might be able to keep it in. Maybe it won't cause any issues, but I've always gotten, I've, I've always gotten rid of it so far because it didn't seem very useful. Anyway, I'll show you what this looks like in a proper XML editor. This is what it would look like. Uh, so as you can see, you have an open tag. So here you've got the open tag building and at the bottom of the document, you've got the closed tag building. The closed tag just has the dash in front of it. Um, and that's this is how XML documents work in general. I don't know why this is all the way over here. But yeah, like you've got the, uh, for example, the key tag starts here, all of this belongs to that structure and then the key tag closes um, and then you've got this value tag which contains you know a bunch of this junk and and then you sort of get the idea of how it works you don't need to know much about this um, so what's important for us as we were demonstrating before with the tile x and tile y that come at the end of these uh, so right now you can see you know you've got a how does it go i mean maybe we'll quickly walk through this you've got a chest that contains the, the the starter seeds that they give you, uh, and that's all. That's that object and that value and that item. I think those tags were all open before. We've got some large terrain features. In this case, you see this unique name tag. Is something we'll have to keep an eye on. Uh, this, I believe, needs to be changed. I think it has to be unique. Um, and then the rest is just the stuff that's inside your your house. So you've got furniture. You've got oak table. Uh, close that piece of furniture. You got another piece of furniture. House plan, etc., etc. And and you sort of, I think you can kind of see how this is all built up. Anyway, towards the end of this document, you have tile X and tile Y. These two need to change as well. And as we said before, that's just based on where you want to place them. And that's it, really. You just change these numbers to where you want the cabin, and you make sure the the you the uh, the ID is unique and. That's all you really need to do. So let's go back into Notepad, into our document, and let's just find unique ID. Oh, sorry. There's there's no wrap option in Notepad, I guess. Yep. So we've got the unique name, close unique name tags here. Um, so what I'll do here is I'll just probably make this a four, I suppose. You might not need to do this as well, but uh, I mean you can experiment in your own time, I'm sure. Next thing I'll do is I will find my X tile, or was it tile X I believe actually. Yep, tile X. Uh, so this is 50. This is my last tile. So the coordinate system is uh, is right and down. A lot of games do it like that. So 14, I'm going to push it down by like, I think 22 seems about appropriate. Um, and that's it. That is this building complete. I guess what I'll do now is I'll copy this and make another one. Because I want, I want, uh, I actually want six houses in this, in this world. So now again, I'm just going to go to the uh, unique ID. And I'll change this to a 5. Fingers crossed that's not been used somewhere else by one of the other cabins. Oh, caught you this time. 
Tilex uh, was 42, I believe. And I'll keep that at 22. Yep, and that's all that that needs. That's all that needs to be changed here. Uh, perfect. Okay. So what I'll do now is I'll go back into my original save. I will fix the damage I've done here. Cool, that looks good to me so far. Yeah, cool, okay. So now all I need to do is where one building ends. So for instance, hey, let me just get rid of this. So I don't think it really matters where you do it, but I'll do it right towards the end. Can you see where this building tag closes? Um, and then the buildings tag, which is the, the grouping of all the buildings tag closes. This is essentially, this is the final building. So this is where the final building we've added was closed. And this is where the collection is closed. And then we move on to, to other, other data that needs to be saved. So what we'll do is just over here, we'll add our new open building, building data, closed building. So that's just here. So see, this starts with a building tag. And it ends with a close building tag. And so what we'll do is we'll just... Uh, give me a second. We will throw that in there. Uh, yeah, if you want a rule to go by, just to see where the buildings... Where the closed buildings with an S tag is. Uh, and the closed building tag just between there. That's where you want to put it. And that's that. And what we'll do is we'll grab our second building. And we will put that in as well. So what I'll do here is I'll find the, uh, the close building tag again. Here we go. And we'll put that in. And that should be it. Fingers crossed that has all been done correctly and I will save this document. Okay, so we have our document that we just uh, altered, which is here. Um, all we need to do is take this file and put it into our actual save file. So here in our save, the save where I took the save file from originally, we'll just uh, replace that file. And that should be that. And if anything's gone wrong, I still have the original file uh, in my backup folder here. So I can just, I can just replace that and, and all should be well. But let's open up the game and see if it worked. Hopefully it's not too loud. Something got messed up with my settings. Oh no, it seems to be okay. Okay, hold your breath. And... Ooh, that was close. There we go. Two more cabins. Um, you'll have to take my word that this means people can join. It does indeed. I'll see if I can get some footage of uh, five or six players joining. But yeah, these cabins are fully functional. Um, they'll all have the parsnip seeds inside them, most likely. And now this current currently this game can hold six players. Uh, 
you know, be careful. The more players you, there's a reason there's a four player limit. The more people you have, the, the, the less stable the game will be. But if you have a group of friends that you want to play with, you know, it's, it can suck to, to be limited to four players. So feel free to use this to your advantage. I hope that helped. Um, I'll probably try and leave you with some footage of people joining the world. Uh, and yeah, let me know if there's any questions. I'll, uh, I'll do what I can to help. Have a nice day.